Oh, William Go, will you never learn? Oh, hello. You know, after a hard day of fighting crime, even I get sick of reading superheroes sometimes. So today, we're going to talk about my top favorite non-superhero comics. But first, let me change out of this outfit by saying the magic word, Shaheen. Hey, hey. welcome, and uh, thanks for checking out the show. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of my favorite things. We're in the Comics and Graphic Novels Library here at uh, Comics HQ, and we're going to talk about some of my very favorite books to read that don't involve superheroes. Now, don't get me wrong, I love superhero comics, and there's a lot of really great ones, and I'm not one of those people who thinks that just because uh, uh, it's a mainstream superhero comic, it can't be a great work of art. I think that ship has sailed, and we know that's not true. You can make great works in any genre. But what um, some people don't realize is that there's such a huge breadth of great material available uh, outside of the superhero genre within the medium of comics. So let's talk a little bit about those. Um, so today... Uh, first, we want to start off with um, Understanding Comics. This is a seminal work by uh, acclaimed indie creator Scott McCloud. Uh, he did this over 20 years ago. It was the first book to really look at the medium of comics in the sort of like critical view, uh, developing vocabulary, establishing sort of the semiotics of comics, if you will. It's an amazing book, and the most amazing part is that it in itself is a comic. So it's a non-fiction comic teaching you about the medium of comics and you know what would be a better way than actually using the medium to learn about the medium. So check it out, Understanding Comics. If you're interested in something a little different, how about Age of Reptiles? This is an all silent comic. There are no word balloons. I don't even think there's any sound effects in this comic. It's strictly looking at uh, dinosaurs in the, uh, the Jurassic or Cretaceous age, and it's sort of looking at it like a nature documentary. So there is a plot, there is a story. It usually involves uh, one dinosaur being hunted by another or, or, or uh, similar sort of nature show circumstances, but done with amazing beauty by Richard Delgado, who was sort of like a, um, a, a, like a set designer or art designer for Star Trek Deep Space Nine before he uh, did his passion project, which was Age of Reptiles. And there have been several volumes. You can pick up the omnibus from Dark Horse Comics. Worth a read for kids of all ages, especially if you've got a kid who's really into dinosaurs. Next, Hard Boiled. Now, Frank Miller's got a lot of great books. And, and, and I was thinking about Frank Miller's non-superhero books, right? Like, uh, Hard Bo uh, like um, Sin City. But to me, Sin City really kind of is a superhero book. I mean, Marv whether you like it or not, is a superhero. He's got pretty much got superhuman powers and uh, you know does some pretty amazing stuff. So not that it's not a great crime book, but I don't view it as strictly non-superheroic. This, you could make an argument this is not as well, but it's just so beautiful. Hard-boiled. Frank Miller and Jeff Darrow, who also worked on Rusty, uh, the boy robot and the big guy. Um, this was their first work together for Dark Horse way back uh, in the late 80s. And it just blew everybody away. It's a larger format book. Jeff Darrow's artwork is incredibly detailed, ultra violent, but incredible to look at. Just every page is chock full of detail. And uh, the story itself is intriguing, kind of Blade Runner-esque. Uh, worth your time. Okay, Jimmy Corrigan. Now on the other end of the spectrum from an ultra violent uh, bullet fest like Hard Boiled would be something like Jimmy Corrigan by Chris Ware. Now, uh, it's called Jimmy Corrigan, The Smartest Kid on Earth. And I remember when this was solicited in previews way back when, when I was still in high school. And I saw it and I was like, wow, this looks like a cool thing. It's going to be a fun little boy genius kind of comic doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And wow, retro looking kind of artwork. And this is my thing. I soon realized it was something totally different, right? Chris Ware writes incredibly beautiful and often very sad comics sort of about life. And, um, and, and this book is about this character Jimmy Corrigan who despite being the smartest kid on earth is, is kind of far from it and is really kind of quite a sad sack uh, with with daddy issues but man it is a beautiful comic with beautiful artwork originally serialized weekly in um, a sort of a weekly magazine in 
uh, Chicago. Anyway, Chris Ware is pretty well known to the indie comics world, so this might not uh, be a surprise to you, but um, most folks I've met have not read it, and I'm not giving it a try, so please check out Jimmy Corgan. You're going to really like it, or you know, it might make you cry. I debated whether or not to include Cerebus in uh, this video because it's controversial. Um, it's a humongous 300-issue run of Canadian indie comics that started as a Conan parody but quickly turned into something really unique and special in the comics world. Now, there's 10 volumes or something comprising all 300 issues. I, my favorite volume is volume 2. And uh, volume one is, is pretty good, but it's really more of just sort of like setting up some characters, and it's more of a direct parody of Conan. Once book two starts, High Society, is when Dave Sim, the creator, started looking at uh, different themes and themes that had not often, if ever, been explored in comics. So throughout the course of this series, Cerebus goes from being a barbarian to a prime minister to a pope to uh, 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 many other things, right? And it's, it's a saga. Uh, set in an amazing world. And if you like political satire, uh, uh, religious satire, um, philosophical exploration, whether you agree or disagree with um, Sims' philosophies, some of which are a little bit toxic and not for everybody, most of those don't happen to the later volumes. Do yourself a favor, look for Cerebus Volume 2 High Society and uh, read it. If, if it hooks you... Um, It'll be unlike anything you've ever read before. Um, if it doesn't, well, there's other stuff to check out. Let's continue. Mouse. This is a classic Pulitzer Prize winning graphic novel. I believe the first ever to win it. Art Spiegelman, uh, creator of Raw, underground creator. Also a co-creator of uh, Wacky Packs, I believe, and uh, Garbage Pail Kids, strangely enough. Created this book, originally serialized in Raw, but brought to graphic novel format. It's amazing. It's his ostensibly it's his, his father's story of being in uh, the concentration camps, um, but really it's a story about about the artist and his father, their complex relationship with each other, um, and 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 the uh, uh, the artist's mother, and of course exploring the, the atrocities of World War II and the concentration camps. Um, it's an amazing book, highly recommended, and uh, worth your time. On a different end of the political spectrum, maybe, is Joe Sacco's Palestine. So uh, Joe Sacco is almost like a r reporter. He tries to do sort of like documentary reporting of what he sees. He travels the world. He goes to hot spots, uh, including Palestine and uh, um, many others in the course of his career. What's amazing is, you know, he started as a rock and roll beat comic, like doing journalism comics. But his art style is so beautiful combination of i don't know robert crumb and maybe um gosh it's so unique and beautiful it's hard to say but his rendering style uh, is fantastic his storytelling is top notch um he, he, from my view i mean he he views things kind of holistically and tries not to be too one-sided about um what he covers and it's just fun funny heartbreaking and beautiful okay Read Fleming World's Toughest Milkman. I just happen to have my copy of the IDW volume here. I happen to have the uh, special Invisible Edition. Uh, really, it's a, quite a collector's item. Really hard to hard hard to come by. Um, but it collects all of the uh, Read Fleming stuff from the late seventies to the eighties, and I believe even into the early nineties. If you haven't read 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 Fleming, go read it. It's hilarious. It's beautifully drawn. It has poignant moments, um, but most of all, it's funny and fun, right? And we don't get enough of that in our lives sometimes. And Reed Fleming is one of those comics you can go back to again and again and get something out of like the absurdity of it, um, as well as just the the uh, the kookiness of the character. Speaking of funny, Milk and Cheese by Evan Dorkin is funny. Now these are pretty much one page, sometimes two or three page strips. Um, with these two sort of like lovable cartoon characters, Milk and Cheese, uh, who just want to be famous uh, cartoon characters and mascots, but um, uh, they're they're total alcoholics as well as ultra violent, and do and say some of the funniest things I've ever seen in comics. They're you know it's, it's not for kids, 
uh, not appropriate for everybody, but if you like kind of dark humor and uh, sometimes disgusting stuff, milk and cheese. Hate. Okay. Um, I'm wearing a Buddy Bradley t-shirt right now, and um, it's no secret that Peter Bag is my all-time favorite cartoonist. And uh, Hate is probably my all-time favorite work by him. The uh, features uh, the character Buddy Bradley, who, uh, uh, when the book started, uh, it, the character actually began in an earlier book called Neat Stuff, and um, uh, that was an anthology of multiple characters by Bag, and uh, Buddy sort of like took center stage and, and took got his own book called Hate. Um, you can find these collected in the Hey Buddy volumes, um, but... There's something about the individual issues. The covers are beautiful. The package is just fantastic. They're as funny as funny can be. Uh, they were set in Seattle in the 90s, right? But like before the whole grunge scene really hit, he was talking about it and documenting it and showing what was going on. And then it hit mainstream popularity, which gave the book another huge uh, pop and, and, and popularity bonus. Um, Bag has gone on now. He, he's a, a libertarian and has gone on to write a lot of uh, comic strips, journalistic comic strips for Reason Magazine on the topic of libertarianism. And has also started writing uh, um, original graphic novels, doing biographies of some of the most uh, uh, famous and controversial women uh, of our time, like, um, uh, like Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. Uh, really interesting great stuff his style is so wacky and crazy instantly recognizable but the storytelling uh while, while everything's all wonky and crazy and car kind of cartoons looking the storytelling is top notch it is hilarious the dialogue is super funny and you'll recognize all kinds of characters um from your own life if you grew up uh you know living in the 90s the last book on my list this is sort of the first book I started uh, reading in the very beginning intro, From Hell. From Hell is my all-time favorite graphic novel by my all-time favorite writer, Alan Moore, uh, with incredible illustrations by uh, Australian Eddie Campbell. So uh, it's ostensibly the story of Jack the Ripper. Yes, they did make a movie out of it, but the movie was terrible. It was a horrible adaptation. How horrible? Well, you may remember that it starred Johnny Depp as sort of this psychic uh, detective type character which was kind of fun and kooky and interesting idea I guess except that character does not exist in this book um, it was totally created just to make the movie more commercial or whatever the movie was like a whodunit who is Jack the Ripper Ooh, and we don't find out at the very end like a whodunit this book is not a whodunit this is a why do you do it we know who Jack the Ripper is from the end of like the very first chapter and it's not about who he is, it's about why and what he's doing. And it spins out from become, from a, just a tale of a murder and murders and, and, and gore uh, into something profound and beautiful, uh, an exploration of the 20th century and an exploration of modern society and um, uh, where uh, William Gull, the Ripper, views himself almost as the midwife giving birth to the 20th century. And I don't want to say too much more except that it's, it's, it's an amazing work of fiction in general and one of the best graphic novel, comics, whatever you want to call it, ever created. It's very dense. It's very thick. I've, I've got a copy right here. I've got my special edition hardcover right here. It's super thick. It's black and white. The artwork is um, kind of uh, different than most comic art you might be used to. A little bit scratchy and... Um, it's being redone as in full color now. I've always enjoyed it in black and white. I go back and read this book at least once a year. And now I'm super looking forward to the new edition in color because it's actually colored by the original artist. So I know that artistically it will be true to the vision. So um, if, if you only pick up one of these books, try From Hell. It's Again, it's not for everybody. You have to like really dense, complicated stuff and you have to love comics and you have to be willing to have some patience and give it a chance and dig it in like you would a great novel. But if you do that, um, you will be extremely rewarded by that. So, hey, thanks everybody for watching this video. And uh, don't forget to check out some of my other videos uh, you, that you might enjoy about comics and computers and all, all kinds of stuff. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon.